Hi, in this video I'm going to talk about the basics of machine learning. There are two types of machine learning. One is supervised, the other is unsupervised. Within supervised learning there are two types, prediction and classification. In this video I'll just talk about the prediction part. Let's say you're a store manager and you collect some data about the time customers spent in your store and how much money they spent. Here's a table of that data. Here's the plot of that data in two-dimensional space. One axis being the time and the other axis being the money. We might think that the relationship is linear and so we might want to plot a straight line to indicate that. The equation of that line is y is equal to ax where y is the uh, amount of money spent by any customer X is the time they spent in the store, and A is the slope of that line. Since the slope seems to be close to 1, we can estimate that if the customer spends about 10 minutes in the store, they would probably be spending about $10. So we have created a model of the behavior. This was done manually. Let's make the problem a little more complicated. Let's say we collect other attributes, such as the time of the day, whether there was a sale going on, and whether the customer shopped with somebody else, with a friend perhaps. As the data gets complicated, the plot moves to a higher dimensional space, and after three dimensions, it's difficult for us to visualize this information. So each column adds a dimension to the data, and it's not impossible to collect hundreds of dimensions, so a hundred dimension this means that the data is going to be plotted in 100 dimensions. And how do we fit the right line to this data? This is what machine learning helps us do. It automatically plots the graph or the straight line or a, even a more complex plot so we can make predictions based on data. If you look at the distance between each point and the line that it's supposed that's supposed to fit it, there is a distance that is the error. So the ideal line will have the least amount of error. So what we want to do is figure out what line would have the least amount of error. So now our goal is to find the value of A that minimizes all these errors. If we were to plot the sum of those errors against the parameter A, then we'll get a curve like this. This is often called the cost function. In the above example, maybe we picked a point A1 and that has an error of E1. We could be doing better. So in this example, if we change the value of A to uh, A2, or we picked a value of A2, then our error reduces further. So this means we're getting a model or a straight line that represents the data much better. In the previous case, we had only one variable x, which represented the time the customer spent at the store. But as we add more of columns, we essentially get other variables such as p, s, and f that we want to be able to comp uh, that we want to be able to include on in our equation as well. So now we have a more complex linear equation that includes these other factors. And now our goal is to be able to find good values of not only A, but also B, C, and D that minimizes the total error. The error function is the same, or the uh, cost function is the same, but it now moves into multiple dimensions that include B, C, and D. So in the case where it includes just A and B, it's easier to visualize because then it becomes a three-dimensional bowl-like shape. And then the idea is to find the ideal values of A and B so that the, error, the uh, cost function is minimized. Every day, we get more and more data, and that data has to go into our model. As that data feeds the model, the accuracy of our model improves because we are now using the latest data to make better estimates. So if you leave it to a machine to do this, then it's better because it can constantly run and update its model instead of doing it manually. 
That is the essence of machine learning. Now, given any new data, we can essentially predict the spend for the customer. As you can imagine, there's a lot of things you could do with this. You can identify which one of these factors is most influential in uh, the customer spending a lot of money at the store, and you can make sure as a store manager that that particular factor is taken care of in your store design. Thank you for watching this video, and if you like it, please give me a thumbs up.